Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. This is going to be part two in my Goodreads Reading Challenge Award Show. Basically, I am choosing winners in the 11 remaining categories. If you haven't seen part one, I will be linking it down below. Definitely recommend you watch that, but let's just get into it because there are so many books left to talk about. So we were at the seventh category, which is science fiction, which is my jam. <laughs> I am always shoving down everyone's throat more sci-fi recommendation. I will link down below. I did do a beginner's guide for it and I am planning a part two very soon because I find that science fiction is way, way too underrated on booktube and it's basically my sole mission in life to just force all of you to read some. In this category, out of the 20, I have only read six of them, which is kind of weird because I read a lot of sci-fi, but I guess not that many that came out that year ended up being in this category, or I guess maybe I didn't read that many from that year. Anyway, uh, a lot of them were disappointing, but there is a strong winner in my heart. So to make it different, I'm gonna start from the bottom. So the first one I have read was Record of a Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers. If you haven't read this series, you need to. It's a very calming, uh, wholesome sci-fi series, which is not something you find very often. The first book is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, which you might be more familiar with. I definitely recommend that book. You definitely need to start, even though they are companion novels, you definitely need to read the first one. You can skip the second one if you want to, though. Wouldn't, but you know, you could. Uh, the third book, though, is an interesting one. It's kind of a slice of life with a murder mystery and it's again very calming. It's not my usual thing, but at the same time I keep telling myself I will forever read more by Becky Chambers because she just has that way of calming my soul. Let's just say it. But if you're usually someone that enjoys to uh, read uh, character-driven contemporary, for example, I would definitely give, uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking so weird today, give, give uh, her books a shot. Uh, one of the strong point was actually the fact that uh, one of the characters you're following is uh, an older lesbian woman and she's in a great relationship and it's not the main focal point of the book, which when do you ever get this representation? Never, never. And then I realized afterwards that the author is married to a woman. I'm like, obviously, now everything makes sense. But yeah, I just thought I would mention it because we don't get enough of that. And if you're looking for more, you need to check out that book. The next book I finished in this category was The Oracle Year by Charles Soule. Uh, if I remember correctly, I believe the author usually writes comics, or at least shorter books for sure. And uh, it was his first attempt to write a longer novel and kind of shows. By that I mean that I definitely felt like it would have benefited from uh, being shortened, but a really interesting premise. So again, if you're someone that tends to read for premises, like I do, uh, you could slash should look into it. Ah, uh, see, I clicked on it and it says that he writes comic. I knew it. So basically you're following a 20 something New Yorker who wakes up one day with the power to predict the future and he just writes down a list and he's kind of trying to decide, uh, should he try to change you know, the future or not. And again, that's what I mean by very interesting premise. Uh, I did find that it kind of got kind of out of breath throughout the book. Is that an expression in English too? But uh, it just kind of got a little tiring because it wasn't sure in what direction it was going. That's kind of why I think it would have benefited from uh, being kind of just squished a bit more and just have a more direct ending. Overall, an interesting topic, but a little bit disappointing. Next book I read in this category was Artificial Condition by Martha Wells, which is book two in the Murderbot series, which, oh my, do I love this series. However, book two was the weakest that I've read so far. I've read the first three. Um, the main character is a robot, essentially. They basically end up becoming kind of, they have their free will, let's just say that, and they kind of just don't really like humans and they decide to be independent and do their own thing and, you know, adventures happen. Um, but yeah, book two feels incredibly fluffy in the sense, like the, the book is so short. Her books are like a hundred and something pages, yet nothing happens for the first half. So personally, I found that it was kind of pointless and it only got good towards the end. And it just like, when you're gonna just buy a book that is this short and there's not enough substance, it's frustrating and it was pretty disappointing because of that. Uh, with that said, if you enjoyed the first one, didn't really care for the second one, you should pick up book three because it definitely gets good once again. But yeah, 
Normally, uh, in the series, the books are quite funny and different and interesting, and I would recommend them. Just this one is the weakest one of the series so far. The next book I read, I'm mentioning it quickly. I did DNF it, I did not finish it. Uh, it is Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas. Um, you know when you read a book and you keep catching yourself having to go back because you're like, am I reading or am I like pretending to read because I am not getting anything from this book. That's kind of what happened with me with this one. I read 20% and I realized I don't remember any of the things that I've read, which never happens to me. I feel like this is the like, second or third time I'm saying this in this video, but like, this is like out of like hundreds of books. So it doesn't happen often, uh, but definitely happened with this one and I just could not connect to it. And then when I went back and read the reviews, a lot of people had the same issues. So I guess I'm not really alone, but still 14,000 people voted for this one to be the winner, but didn't really care for it. I think the reason I had actually read it was because people were saying that it was a little bit like The Handmaid's Tales and I, I wouldn't know, but I'm gonna say no. One more before we get to the good stuff. Um, Only Human by Sylvain Novel, which is the last book in the Temis Files series. I always love to, uh, you know, support a French Canadian author. Whoop, whoop. And I did overall enjoy this series. They're very quick read, almost like, they read pretty much like a movie. However, the last book was by far the weakest. So unfortunately, <laughs> this isn't a really positive review. The author admitted that he was heavily influenced by the um, current political state that was going on uh, in Europe with immigrants. And it really shows, uh, this isn't really the issue, it's just that the book went in a completely different direction and it was really, really, really weak. And it was really a big letdown after uh, the beginning, especially the first book was really solid. Oh, I do wanna mention, <laughs> everyone keeps saying, oh, you need to read this as an audiobook. Don't do that to yourself. I don't understand why people keep saying that because the audiobooks, um, I am obviously very sensitive to the topic because one main character is a French Canadian and the narrator, which the author didn't choose any of that, but still uh, worth mentioning. This is not a French Canadian accent. This is a French accent. Just get it, get it together. Um, obviously nobody else will care, but I just thought I would mention it. But the real reason I say that you shouldn't listen to it as an audiobook, at least not the second book, well, you can do it for first, not after the awards, because you are introduced to the whiniest character ever. Her voice is horrible, which I guess, well, at least the voice that she's doing for that character. Uh, apparently the accent is not right either, but the voice, the voice though, if you wanna hear it, I did insert an extract in my, I believe it was my most disappointing books of 2018, and it's straight up, <laughs> sounds like bad porn. <laughs> that's how I've been describing it because that's straight up what it is. So don't do that to yourself. Finally, let me talk about the best book ever in this category slash the only one I really enjoyed, clearly, uh, Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. This was pure magic, especially after all the other ones. This was pure magic. This is book two in the villains, I was going to say duology. This is technically now not a duology. A third book has been announced, which we're all very happy. Uh, the first book was Vicious, which was all the rage on booktube when I arrived in 2016. And I read it, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't something that blew my mind. Although the premise was interesting, you're following two main male characters who become friends in university and they find a way to develop superpowers. But instead of becoming superheroes, they become super villains. And I enjoy V. Schwab's writing style. And I love that uh, in the series, especially, although in general too, her chapters are really, really short. So it just keeps you super engaged and it's just so easy to go through her books. Uh, but you know, it was like a solid four stars for me. This one is easily five stars. You are introduced from the beginning to one of my new favorite super villain, Marcella. And I can't help myself. I have to just support her and love her and kind of feel like she's kind of right. I just overall really, really enjoyed this book. Uh, the characters, the story, I felt like it had like an even better direction than the last one. The superpowers are interesting and you just get more and more from that world and I just want more. So that's why I'm super happy a third book has been announced. So yes, highly recommend you pick up this series. Totally worth it. Clearly this is my winner. <laughs> Next category is best horror book, which they did it again. The winner was Elevation by Stephen King, which can we talk about it once again? Who decides that? Like, this is not a horror book. 
It is not. I don't know why one, uh, clearly people didn't read the book and decided, Stephen King, let me vote for this one, you cheaters. This is basically why I'm doing my own award show because of stuff like that. So uh, let's talk about it, Elevation. This is a fantasy novella with a heavy dose of virtue signaling. I kind of always feel a little icky at talking about virtue, signal virtue signaling because uh, let's take the obvious, I am a feminist, I'm definitely on the left, blah, blah, blah. But um, it's the second time I read a Stephen King books, Stephen King's book that leaves me feeling like, really? Essentially, you're following a grumpy old man who lives in a red city, Republican city, and his neighbors are a lesbian couple and this isn't really why he doesn't like them there's drama not because of that and uh really all of that is happening while he's going through that fantasy thing uh where every day becomes lighter and lighter like he will just shove rocks in his pockets but he's still going to become lighter and he starts wondering what's gonna happen to me when i get to zero like it makes no sense so uh once again you get rubbed your face constantly heavily on that virtue signaling of I am not homophobic or sexist. And uh, as always, the ending sucked. Uh, I don't know if anyone else will agree, but man, that ending was not great. But yeah, not horror, n'est-ce pas, Emily? Makes no sense. So uh, it can't be my winner. And again, I am saying that nobody read that book if they voted for it, as in the winner for best horror, obviously. Uh, I did read the runner up because I had read that one already. So this was the one I had chosen to read and it was uh, Baby Thief. And I tortured myself with this book on the plane. It was the only book I had on my phone and I hated every minute of it. I sound so negative, but I swear, a lot of the books that I've read in these categories were just not that great, but I promise a lot of awesome books will be mentioned in my best books of 2019. In my defense, a lot of people also did not like this book. It started really good actually, because it reminded me a little bit of the movie, The Orphan, or is it just Orphan? Uh, a young kid uh, really, really hates her mom and is a little weirdly close to her dad. And you're kind of left wondering, is it um, incest? Is it paranormal? What is it? And things become worse and worse and the ending absolutely sucked. And I was so mad that I read this book because if it weren't for this challenge, I would have not finished it. And really, let's just not talk about it anymore. Not great. I also read one more. So three books in total in this category. Uh, it was The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. And I have a complicated relationship relationship with this author in the sense that he has really interesting premises, but again, his endings are not great. You're following a young family, two parents, with their little girls who go to a like remote cabin in the woods. And uh, they are basically taken by a group of people that uh, try and force them to do horrible stuff, otherwise the end of the world will happen. And you're just left not sure, is it true? Are they crazy? Like you're just really left wondering what is going on and it's so crazy and it's so great and then the ending happens. I obviously don't want to spoil anything. Uh, so if you don't want to hear about it, come back whenever the book is not on the screen anymore because I, I just need to rant about it a little bit. Um, essentially, like it's a spoiler, but not really a spoiler, but you know, you decide, you do your thing. Um, I am someone that I much, much prefer to be told then things left for you to decide. Because to me, that just sounds like the author did not freaking know what to do. And I am not here to do your job, dude. I will not imagine the ending. You should have done that. Um, I, I'm definitely very bitter about that stuff because it happens so often and I'm, I, I just resent it immensely. So yeah, enough with the spoiler stuff. You can come back. Uh, if I have to choose a winner, uh, elevation doesn't count because it's not horror. Baby teeth was terrible. So I'm gonna have to give it to a cabin at the end of the world. And I will just focus on the first half of the book. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna quickly mention the category of humor. I don't read a lot of them usually. I probably read like one or two every year. And uh, I usually tend to go with uh, the ones where I know the author, especially if they are the ones that read their own book. And it was actually the case with The Last Unicorn by Tiffany Haddish. 
I uh, hadn't read this book before. I knew a little bit uh, of the author. I've seen her in like interviews and I've actually watched movies with her and I really enjoyed her and I really liked her voice, which is important obviously if she's going to read her own book. Uh, unfortunately, it really rubbed me the wrong way. And it's one of those things where like, I guess humor can be kind of touchy, but like some of the stuff, you know, the, there's a really fine line at some point between being funny and being like incredibly harsh on herself and apparently later on during the book she's she, a lot of people had a bunch of issues let's just say that I didn't read that part so I can't really say uh, but yeah put it down could not finish it so really uh, it's the only one I did read in this category so I guess I can't really say much so I'm hoping that next year will be better but I didn't attempt anything else afterwards because it was just not for me now we get in the nonfiction category and for some reason Goodreads has four different ones. So I had to read more that way, which is fine. I feel like about 10% of the books that I read each year are nonfiction because I read mostly to distract myself, kind of relax. So I feel like I need to be in the right mood to read nonfiction. So uh, in the first category, which is just best nonfiction, I have read three, so not too bad. Uh, the winner was I'll Be Gone in the Dark, One Woman's Obsessive, obsessive Search for the Golden State Killer. Um, I feel like everyone and their mom has been going on a crazy, crazy wild ride being obsessed with murder mystery and like unsolved mystery and even YouTube went on like a big trend of those videos before they got um, <laughs> demonetized. Um, I really never got into that phase, but I was excited to read this because it was the winner. Um, unfortunately, I felt like it was more about that woman's life her research, which I mean, it kind of says that in the title, but I thought I would have about, I don't know, like it just wasn't something I found myself being fascinated about. Uh, there was some interesting stuff, but I feel like these type of non-fictions, you have to enjoy following uh, the main narrator, character, person, whatever, it's non-fiction. Um, and I really didn't care that much, so it was kind of hard for me to connect. But uh, if that's your jam, it's very popular, so a lot of people did enjoy it, but for me, because of that, it won't be my winner. I also read 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. Uh, it's by the same author as Sapien, A Brief History of Humankind, which I had really enjoyed, so I was really excited to read that one. Uh, it's basically supposed to be 21 lessons about, you know, things that we need to fix if we want to make it as humans in the future. And uh, it wasn't 21 lessons, it was 21 chapters, which was already a huge disappointment. I really, really liked the beginning because it was definitely more focused on technology and like science, which is what I thought the book was going to be about. And I was really loving the beginning and then it got weaker and weaker because it became more and more about the author's stance and like, politics, religion, and it just, he did it a little bit in Sapien. I mean, if you've read it, you kind of know what I mean, but I didn't feel like it was too bad, but in that one, it was really, really, like more than half the book was about that stuff. And I just really didn't care to read this when I thought it was going to be about something else. You know what I mean? I kind of have complicated feelings about this book and I would be actually curious to hear whatever you thought about it because why not? Uh, the winner for me was the third book that I did read, which was Not That Bad, which is an ontology about um, essentially essays about rape culture. A bunch of people wrote uh, essays about how um, things they went through. Uh, it's obviously a very hard topic. I did listen to it as an audiobook, which I would recommend. Obviously, huge trigger warnings. Uh, one of the things I did enjoy was the fact that at the end of the day, if you do read it, you are going to connect really, really hard to at least a couple of those stories, which was obviously my case too. Um, it was, it was rough. It was honestly very, very rough, but I think it's an important read and I did enjoy it uh, to, you know, a certain extent. Uh, but yeah, for me, this was definitely the best one of the three. So that's my winner. Next category was best memoir and autobiography, which is not something I actually read like ever. I don't know why, I just don't find myself being that intrigued about people's life, I guess. Uh, but I did read the two uh, winners because they were very, very close and I was wanting to read both of them anyway. So I read Educated by Tara Westover and then Becoming by Michelle Obama. So let's start with the winner, which was Educated. And holy schmoly, that was a tough read. I did listen to it as an audiobook, which was probably the best thing for me to do because I'm not sure I would have finished it otherwise because the amount of abuse in this book just 
drove me mental. Essentially following the story uh, of a girl who grew up in, uh, I think it's like in the mountains in Idaho uh, f with a family that is kind of cray cray, a uh, survivalist, you know, canning, preparing for the end of the world, very religious. And basically her story escaping this to try and finally get some education and, you know, a PhD and everything and how she did all of these things. And um, yeah, the amount of abuse really, really got bad and it really got to me. At some point I definitely had to put the book down because damn, um, it was really harsh. I was kind of angry. It has nothing to do with the book, but I'm still gonna mention it. That a lot of people are calling her out being like, oh, it's not nonfiction. It's clearly fiction because your family is saying that that never happened. And I'm like, have you ever been through abuse, especially fam family abuse? Like, of course they're not gonna be like, yeah, I totally beat the shit on my sister. You know, <laughs> like nobody's gonna do that. Anyway, uh, that's a different story. Uh, very, very, very tough read. Um, I'm glad I read it. Uh, it's definitely something I would recommend if you are interested, but just prepare yourself. But yeah, solid book for sure. Uh, then, like I said, I did read uh, Becoming by Michelle Obama. Actually, I listened to it as an audiobook too, which again, the library uh, waiting list was much shorter and I'm glad I did it because she's the one reading it. Uh, I am, like I said, Canadian, French Canadian. So uh, she was never my, my first lady. And I didn't really know that much about her as a person. And you obviously get so much more in this one. You get a lot about her childhood and then her education, which that part was really interesting. And kind of just, you just get to see how much, like even though you might not agree whatever politically with her, you just can't deny that she's a decent, good person and that she really, really tried and that, um, she still does and she actually never really wanted to go into politics and even though she supported her husband she wasn't really into it and you get to uh kind of see her side of how she you know started a relationship with Barack Obama and I really enjoyed how she really didn't like him at first which is always funny um but yeah I really enjoyed that book a lot more than I thought especially like maybe less her childhood part but like more the rest was really really interesting and uh, if you still haven't read it I definitely recommend you do so there was this really solid book and I can't decide which one I like the most okay both of them are totally worth a read I just give them a thumbs up you need to the next category is best history and biography I have only read one which I will go through very quickly um it was The Good Neighbor the Life and Work of Fred Rogers, which I listened once again as an audiobook. I don't think I would have been able to finish it otherwise. Um, I didn't know that much about Mr. Rogers because once again, French Canadian did not grow up watching his show, which is sad now that I know about it. But once again, I do rate my books based on my enjoyment and I can't say this was an enjoyable book at all. Uh, I am looking forward to watching the movie with Tom Hanks because Tom Hanks, but uh, it's not something I think most people need to read. I didn't like really care for the information that I really learned in there, uh, but you definitely get to see how uh, decent of a person he was. But yeah, I I mean, I guess by default he has to win because it's the only one I read, but meh. Now finally my no favorite nonfiction category, best science and technology. I have only read three books in there because I guess it just happened that way. Um, I read actually the first three on top, so I guess I get I got to read the most popular ones. Although there are quite a few that are still on, I'm still on the waiting list at my library, so I might eventually get to more of them. So uh, the winner was The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, which yeah, um, Child Emily was totally obsessed with dinosaurs. Like I listened so many times to uh, The Land Before Time, Actually, I got really sick as a kid and my parents had to buy me dinosaur, plastic dinosaurs because they could not stand to listen to me listen to that movie ever again. So I had to like do the whole story with myself. Anyway, <laughs> not so fun fact. But if you like dinosaurs and you want to hear someone geek the crap out of dinosaurs for hours, you should check out that book. Uh, it was great to uh, hear that dinosaurs were basically giant chickens or more like chickens are now tiny dinosaurs. And <laughs> getting to say that after reading it to everyone you know is great. Actually, I had heard that before, but I didn't know it was from this book and it was just great because now I know. So yeah, great book for sure. I did also listen to the audiobook of Brief 
answers to big questions, which includes extracts of Stephen Hawking. So if you are going to listen to it as an audiobook, you're gonna get that, which I definitely recommend you do that. It's a very short audiobook. If I remember correctly, it was like five or six hours, but uh, it was still interesting. Uh, I do feel like it's something I would need to like reread a couple of times to really get all the information, but it was a really entertaining, quick, easy nonfiction read, and I enjoyed it. I also ended up uh, listening to uh, She Has Her Mother's Laugh, and this one is about genetic, and <laughs> uh, this was way too long. I think the audiobook ended up being like 20 something hours. Um, the book, the physical book has like 500 and something pages, but then it's a science-based one, so there's probably like 100 pages that are like footnotes. But, uh, I kind of found myself feeling that it really, really needed or would have benefited from being, you know, shortened a lot. Uh, but overall interesting topic, I think I would have preferred it as a physical book because I would have been able to, you know, fast forward, <laughs> look at, skip a few pages here and there, but yeah, interesting topic, just too long, like way, way too long. So I think if I have to choose a winner, I'm gonna go with the tiny dinosaurs. Uh, best poetry, I read the first two. I read The Witch Doesn't Burn, this one, which uh, by Amanda Lovelace. I have complicated. Okay, poetry is not really my thing, especially a modern one. I read it because I had to type of thing. I didn't really care for it. I feel like uh, people reviews seem to be either very positive or they didn't really care for it. And I find myself being kind of very mad. Like I won't really remember this long-term type of thing. So not really surprised, but you know, I tried, I guess. A lot of people were telling me actually to give a chance to the runner up, which is why I also listened to that one as an audiobook, which you need to do if you go through it. It is uh, The Poet X. And I definitely, again, recommend the audiobook because uh, there's a lot of Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. And it was just great to listen to it, but also just the rhythm. It just flew really, really nicely as an audiobook. Um, I really, really enjoyed like three quarters <laughs> first three quarters of the book because it was just a really, really interesting story. However, uh, I do want to mention that I hated the ending. I can't really say much because obviously, spoiler free as always, but if you want to hear my thoughts, I definitely would recommend checking out on Goodreads. Uh, you have to click to view the spoiler, so spoiler free otherwise. And uh, I had some strong issues towards the end. Apparently it is uh, inspired by our life, so you know, whatever, but just my two cents. Next category was best debut author. I have read one, two, three, four, eight, although I really wish I had had time to get to the ninth, but whatever. Uh, the first one was Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adayemi. This is a YA fantasy series that has uh, a lot of inspiration from Africa. The magic system is just, I loved it. I really enjoyed the world building. I enjoyed the characters, how uh, strong the first, the main female character was. Um, my issues with this can be summarized by, I wish this was an adult book. <laughs> and by that, I mean that it really has the weaknesses of a lot of YA books in terms of romance. The fact that everyone has to be matched with everyone, which is a huge pet peeve of mine. So obviously might not be a problem with you, for you, but yeah. Um, a lot of strength, but that was the one thing that really brought it down for me. I did end up giving it like 4.5 stars, so it was still a really solid read. If you are someone that usually really enjoys YA fantasy books, you need to check that one. It's great. Book 2 was supposed to come out uh, earlier this year, but I think it's coming out no uh, December 3rd, which I think is going to be the day I'm posting this. So today you can check it out. I will definitely be reading it, but I'm just a little worried about the romance, that's all which I always am really. Some of the other ones I've already talked about, so I'm just gonna mention them. There is The Woman in the Window, The Tattooist of Auschwitz, The Kiss Cushion, Puppy War. I also read The Astonishing Color of After, which is a story about grief, a Y one. Uh, it was interesting if you are someone that enjoys magical realism and um, Y kind of contemporary, I guess, type of story. You're following a young girl who gets to finally meet her uh, mom's side of family in uh, Asia, and she never got to know them whatsoever. She doesn't really speak the language either, so there's like issues trying to communicate and then magical realism. It was good. Uh, I completely understand the hype if you are looking for those type of books, but they break my heart, so I'm always a little like, 
not wanting to read them, but it was pretty solid. An absolutely remarkable thing, which again, we've talked about, same thing with the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. If I have to choose a winner, I, ah, this is hard. I kind of want to mention the puppy war, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to be the puppy war. There you go. Solid fantasy book. Next category is best young adult fiction. Uh, they, I believe, are mostly contemporary. So once again, not really my jam usually. Uh, there are three I had read. Leah on the Offbeat, which, full disclaimer, I feel like it's one of those books that I gave a pretty high rating at first. And then afterward, I'm noticing more issues slash I'm realizing that I really just enjoy the character slash Simon from the first book. So yeah, there's that. It was kind of nice though to get some representation of girl loves girls, which you usually just get boy likes boys. So there's not enough of them. So I think I got very excited over that fact more than the actual book. I also uh, read Sadie by Courtney Summers. And this was a really interesting format. It's kind of a podcast contemporary murder mystery and it took me kind of by surprise honestly especially why uh it was just really uh, an interesting concept i'll i'll come back to it <laughs> spoiler alert uh and then uh, there was the astonishing color of after which i've already mentioned so the winner for me has to be sadie which kind of is weird because i feel like if you had asked me earlier this year i would have chosen the on the offbeat but yeah sadie it is because i think it's definitely worth a shot it's not something that really like blew my mind, but I still think it deserves a little bit of hype. If you are someone that enjoys YA contemporary, you should definitely check that one out. And then last but not least, uh, you get best young adult fantasy and sci-fi section, which is like so many books really. Uh, I did not read the one I was supposed to read because uh, technically the winner I think was book six and I was supposed, no seven, and I was supposed to read book two because I had read book one. I never got to it. I want to do a reading vlog. So we're just going to keep that for a different day. So out of all of them, I have read five of them. Not too bad. The first one I did mention already so quickly, Children of Blood and Bone. Then you get The Cruel Prince by Holy Black. Most unmemorable book of all time. Uh, I usually have a pretty good memory and I can mostly tell you about a book, which I guess I kind of have proven a little here, maybe, hopefully. And uh, this one is one of those books where I struggle to remember what it was about because like 400 pages of fluff, nothing happens. Uh, you get Fae and human. I don't know. I just really didn't care for it. Uh, you get that poor, poor girl who uh, gets stuck in that weird romance with a feeling boy, bad, bad boy, and nothing happens until the end. So can you see how bitter I am about the whole thing? <laughs> also, my camera, the battery is about to die, so I'm kind of just moving forward. Uh, Tenderhead by Neil Schusterman. Amazing why sci-fi series. If you are looking to test them, even if you usually only read adult books, check that one out. Blew my mind. Fantastic. Uh, the first book is actually Scythe and uh, you it starts with like a utopian kind of feel world. Basically death is not a thing anymore and you have those Scythe people. Their job is to kill people to just maintain population numbers and a lot of political intrigue. It was really great and then book two you get even more political intrigue. There's a little bit of romance but let's just you know. <laughs> and, uh, you get more artificial intelligence. It just develops and the world becomes bigger and bigger. It ends on a ridiculous cliffhanger. And then uh, book three just came out. So if you're reading it now, you're not gonna have to deal with what I had to deal with. And uh, it's one of the next books that I'm picking up because I cannot deal anymore. Uh, but yeah, fantastic book, definitely recommend it. Uh, then you have Skyward by Brendan Sanderson, which I genuinely believe would have won if it had not come out. Like I think it was came, came out like the month the award show thing got done, nominations. So that's why I didn't win, I'm guaranteeing you. This is uh, by Brandon Sanderson, so obviously it was awesome. It is a YA sci-fi, and actually I was a little bit nervous when I went into it because the only book series I didn't really care for that I read by him was his other YA sci-fi series because the romance was so cringy. So I was a little scared. Uh, I shouldn't have been. This was easily a five star. It was just amazing. Uh, what I liked it, you know how I mentioned some books are like big fluffy, nothing happens, pointless books. Not this one. It's like 500 pages, but like so many things happens. I will try to kind of summarize the book, but they're so complex, which is what I like. His world building is amazing and he always blows your mind. And it was really funny and doom slug and uh, artificial intelligence, spaceship. Anyway, 
let's get to it. Basically, the remnant of humanity are stuck on a planet that keeps getting attacked by aliens. And uh, you're following a young female character who, uh, her dad was a pilot and pilots are like, you know, gods in that world because they fight back. And the only thing that is shameful is to be a coward. It's the worst thing you can do. And unfortunately, her dad was killed during a battle or uh, trying to escape. So obviously she's shamed, it's on her. Uh, her family is basically, you know, rejected by the whole society. And she really wants to become a pilot to, you know, absolve her father and then becomes a hero herself. And she has to struggle to try and get into that pilot school and then learning this stuff while everyone hates her. And what I really enjoyed was the fact that you get a lot of character growth in one book. <laughs> Can I just emphasize this? Because it's one of my huge pet peeves in a lot of why really popular series. The main character is not likable and then doesn't become likable until book 55, which do not tell me that she gets so much better at book nine. It doesn't matter. Like if she sucks from the beginning, do not expect me to root for her. <laughs> which would be fine, by the way, if the main character was actually supposed to be unlikable, which I find myself reading some Y fantasy books, <coughs> Throne of Glass, uh, where you're, supposed, you're actually supposed to root for the character, but then you just resent their existence. I don't know. In this case, she is kind of so-so and then she has some character growth in one book. And uh, it's great to watch characters' relationship uh, throughout, you know, in a time of war. Uh, there is a love interest, but not a romance, which I'm grateful for. Um, because again, characters do not need to all be matched. Finally, the best part with Brendan Sanderson is always his endings. He just is great at doing it. You know how sometimes you read a big book and then they end, you know, there's a bunch of fluff and then it ends with a cliffhanger because they want you to buy the next one and I just resent that immensely. Uh, this is not the case with his books because he tends to, camera moved, huh? The battery had died, that's why. But what he tends to do is that it gives you a big boom at the end that isn't a cliffhanger. It's actually, it gives you a big piece of information which is so satisfying and it helps me be able to wait for the next book, which usually with him, it's like five minutes. He keeps coming out with books so fast, I don't even know how he does it. Uh, but yeah, book two uh, just came out at the end of November. So if you enjoyed the first book, you're gonna be able to pick up the next one ASAP and not have to wait like I had to. But yes, to me, this was, I mean, spoiler alert, the winner. Uh, it's just fantastic. And I genuinely believe that if it had come out like in beginning of the year, it would have been the winner because it's just amazing. Uh, the last one in that category that I did read was Lifelike by J. Kristoff, which is a YA sci-fi. I have read and absolutely adored the Nevernight series by him this year, which is an adult fantasy series, which is just so great. Uh, so I was very, very excited to read something else by him and who was I disappointed? As much as I liked the other series, this I just didn't care for at all. It just, the writing style was not the same, obviously, but like just the quality, the depth of the story, the just character and the world building was just so much weaker. And uh, the twist were obvious to me. I didn't care for, um, you know, what happened and everything. It just felt YA in a bad way. You know, there were some fantastic YA books. When I say that it read like YA is that all my issues that, you know, will happen commonly in YA books were present. It just, it just felt so weak after enjoying the rest, probably even more because I really liked something else by him in the same year. So yeah, let's not even talk about it. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, in this category, the winner, Brendan Sanderson, Skyward, obviously. We're done. These were the 17 categories out of 21 that I read for my Goodreads reading challenge. I hope you enjoy this. I felt like a lot of books were kind of meant to pretty terrible for me this year. Uh, I mean, you know, this is how it is very often. There's gonna be, you know, a curve bell, uh, some amazing ones, some uh, terrible ones, but most books that you will pick up end up being kind of so-so eventually. They have their strength and their weaknesses and it will depend on your taste, obviously. But I tried to be as objective as I could, which is not much. I really enjoyed doing this challenge so much so that I am doing it for 2020. I will be basically reading a bunch of the winners and runner up for the Goodreads 
Choice Award of 2019. So if you want to participate, there will be a video very, very soon, basically mentioning the ones I am picking up and then, you know, I will probably read a couple more in each category just so I'm able to do, again, a wrap up at the end of the year. I really hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. Again, feel free to comment in the comment section your opinion on any of these books, if you love them, if you hated them, if you agree with me, if you would have chosen a different winner, it's always part of fun. Don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And definitely don't forget to subscribe because again, I am planning on doing my end of the year series pretty much next and you definitely don't want to miss that. I'll see you in my next videos. Bye. We did it, Em. Not because of you.